Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming. My name is Chao Kang, a postdoc from Scientific Data Management Group in Computational Research Division. Today, I'm going to present my work titled Improving O2Many Personalized Communication in Two-Phase I.O. This is part of my PhD thesis. Large scientific applications have a large number of computation steps. Scientists usually want to get the results back in a short period of time for their simulations, so they can try more different combinations of initial parameters. Hopefully, they can use the results to draw useful scientific inferences. When we have a large number of computation steps, the application performance can be slow. Parallel computing can speed up uh, application performance. A computation task can be divided and distributed to multiple compute nodes. Each of the compute nodes carry out computations independently. The final results are merged in the end. One of the merging methods is to store data in a single shared file. My research focuses on improving the performance of shared file I.O. When multiple compute nodes are storing data into the same file in a file system, there are a few challenges. A file system is for general purpose storage. To avoid errors, it usually has its own rules to handle I.O. requests from different compute nodes concurrently. A method uh, is, to, is to use a lock or a token to avoid multiple compute nodes from accessing the same file region. This could cause undefined behaviors. As the number of compute nodes scales, many compute nodes could be competing for the same lock repeatedly. This scenario is called lock contention. Another issue is the network contention. The network towards a file system has limited bandwidth. When many compute nodes are competing for the network resource for sending their I.O. requests to the file system, the overall throughput of the network could be slower. An analogy is uh, the traffic jam uh, when you try to drive home. Uh, the, uh, most of the cars cannot uh, go very fast, so this is similar to the compute nodes sending their I.O. requests to the file system. An example of parallel I.O. is the checkpointing stage of the energy exascale Earth system models that runs on DOE machines. It is a fancy name for large-scale weather forecasting. For example, we can model the formation of hurricane or model the ocean temperatures in a very high resolution. It is storing uh, checkpointing results back to uh, the file system for a short period of time. Uh, with the checkpointing, when the compute nodes they failed, we can restart uh, the application from the checkpointing uh, timestamp. This can avoid uh, rerunning re the entire application again when things uh, go wrong. Improving the parallel I.O. performance can make this application faster because I.O. is an important part of this application. Two-phase I.O. is a widely used design for parallel I.O. Two-phase I.O. by its name consists of two stages. The first stage is called the communication phase. In the communication phase, all processes send their I.O. requests to a subset of processes called I.O. aggregators, as denoted by the blue dots in the figure. Later in the I.O. phase, I.O. aggregators perform I.O. operations with the underlying file system using the aggregated I.O. requests. An analogy for two-phase I.O. is a large shopping mall. You only have a few clerks for checking out the items. If every customer who only purchases a small amount of item all joins the queue for the clerk, uh, you are going to have a very low efficiency. However, if all customers are going to send their shopping list to a few shopping agents, and each of the shopping agents they can buy things in bulk, and they, the checkout process is much faster. And then once they checked out, uh, they can give their 
items to uh, the corresponding customers. So in this case, the shopping agents are the I.O. aggregators and the clerks are the file systems. Two-phase I.O. is for improving I.O. performance. I.O. aggregators can coalesce I.O. requests from different processes into contiguous blocks. So uh, in our example, this is similar to something like we buy things in bulk and to, that can aggregate the requests from all uh, the customers. And also, we can use data saving to avoid non-contiguous uh, file request access. Furthermore, for certain file systems, using a specific number of I.O. aggregators to access the file servers can avoid lock and network contentions. The communication phase of two-phase I.O. exhibits an all-too-many pattern. The many group refers to the I.O. aggregators, which is typically much smaller than the size of all processes. The all-to-many communication pattern corresponds to the V and W versions of MPI O2O function. Contention is the main challenge of my work. We refer contention to the case when a receiver has to concurrently receive metadata or data from a huge number of senders. When this happens, the receiving performance can be dramatically reduced compared with receiving from one sender after another. We list a few popular algorithms designed for O2O communication patterns. Brooks' algorithm aims for optimizing the number of communication steps. The algorithm finishes in a log number of processes complexity. However, its inverse binary term is not optimal so it is usually used for small message exchanges. Pairwise algorithm, on the other hand, finishes in exactly the number of processes steps minus one. It is usually implemented with blocking MPI send receive functions. The spread out algorithm adopted by the current implementation of MPI O2O function in MPH allows asynchronous MPI functions. My contributions for solving the communication contention in the communication phase of two-phase I.O. can be summarized as the following. So I proposed a balanced version of the spread out algorithm, and I applied communication throttling to the communication phase of two-phase I.O. Finally, I presented a two-layered aggregation method. The first method is a generalized version of the spread out algorithm for all too many personalized communication pattern. The original spread out algorithm may enter a case that a receiver post is received requests for a huge number of standards in a single MPI VTOL function. Uh, so in this example, we can see rank 3 is trying to receive uh, data from five different standards. However, on the other hand, the rest of receivers are only receiving from uh, one sender concurrently. As a result, uh, this imbalancing of the workload could cause the struggler effect. In our paper, we have more detailed analysis for uh, this struggler effect in terms of mathematical equations. And the proposed method resolved this problem by fully balancing out the communication workload across all receivers. And for different kinds of rank assignments, we have a proof that this algorithm can always balance out the workload. <coughs> communication throttling is also important for avoiding communication contentions. Having a lot of uh, I receive requests posted concurrently can increase the temporary memory usage at a receiver. And also, we spend a lot of time for checking whether the uh, VTOL functions is completed or not. So this is like a light-weighted version of the MPI test every time uh, the background thread is going to uh, check. So we explicitly limit the number of MPI I receive requests uh, posted in a single MPI VTOL operation. The receiver has to receive from a large number of senders. We divide the MPI asynchronous request into multiple batches. An MPI 
wait out function is called for one batch after another. The last method is called two-layered aggregation method. We break down the communication phase of two-phase I.O. into two parts. In the first step, a set of processes called local aggregators gather I.O. requests from processes within the same compute nodes. Later, these local aggregators forward the I.O. requests to the I.O. aggregators. So in this example, we denote the green dots as the local aggregators. Uh, finally, the I.O. aggregators enter the I.O. phase, and this step is exactly the same as the original two-phase I.O. With two-layered aggregation method, the all-to-many personalized communication pattern does not exist anymore. Therefore, we can have a significant improvement of communication uh, cost. So as we can see in this example, uh, the local aggregation phase uh, is a many-to-one com uh, communication pattern, and later in the global aggregation phase, we have this many-to-many -many pattern. Therefore, uh, we can have these improvements of the communication performance. We use different O2-many communication kernels to evaluate the performance of two-phase I.O. Uh, so in this talk, I'm going to present the results related to E3SM application since due to the time limit. Uh, so we, the previous algorithms we discussed are used for these evaluations. Before we show the comparisons of different uh, communication algorithms, we first strengthen the importance of throttling when asynchronous MPI functions are used for implementing the communication phase of two-phase I.O. As we increase the throttling limit, the communication time is dramatically increased, especially on a large number of compute nodes. For example, if we observe the right-hand side figures, once we scale the throttling limit beyond a certain point, the communication cost increases dramatically. This would prove the point that we should use uh, throttling for uh, the all-to-many personalized communication pattern. Later in our experiments, we used a uh, throttling limit less than 32. However, on different uh, clusters, we may choose different throttling limits. <coughs> on query, when 64 nodes are used, the spread out and balanced spread out algorithm have the same performance. This is not surprising at all since we used 64 luster stripe count, and there are 64 nodes. As a result, uh, the communication pattern of the balanced spread out and the original spread out algorithms are the same. Once we move our experiments to a larger number of compute nodes, such as uh, Summit 512 nodes and query 256 nodes, as shown in the figures here, uh, the balance spread out algorithm can reduce the communication performance, can reduce the communication cost. Yeah. So in this orange bar, we can see that, yeah, in this in both figures, uh, we are having less communication cost than the original implementation of uh, I'm pitch, uh, Romeo in I'm pitch. The two-layer aggregation method can further reduce the communication cost. So as shown in these two figures, we can observe uh, this is a significant improvement. So because the two-layer aggregation method removes the all too many personalized communication implicitly, therefore, uh, this improvement of communication a performance is expected. Selecting the correct number of local aggregators is also an important task. For a small number of compute nodes, choosing a large number of processes per node as uh, local aggregators is the best option. However, on a large number of compute nodes, we should few, use a fewer number of local aggregators per node. The reasoning behind choosing the number of aggregators is the under or over utilization of hardware resource. In my 
TPDS paper published last year, I have more reasoning for how to choose an uh, appropriate number of local aggregators. So in conclusion, uh, parallel computing can improve the performance of scientific applications, especially for uh, I.O. intensive applications. Shared file access is a challenging task, and my work is trying to uh, improve the performance of a particular step of uh, two-phase I.O., which is the communication phase. And I was focusing on uh, improving the communication performance by reducing the contention that occurred in the all too many personalized communication. In my future work, I'm going to study more on how to improve the delegated server um, I.O. model. So for the past work I did was trying to solve the problem when multiple processes are calling collective write or collective read uh, directly to the, and in, they interact with the file systems. In uh, the delegated I.O. servers is quite different. So instead of choosing the client processes as I.O. aggregators, we have delegated I.O. servers to handle the task. And uh, these I.O. servers can uh, receive data from multiple applications. So potentially this could be more challenging. Uh, hopefully later on I can produce a software that can speed up the performance of delegated I.O. servers. Uh, thank you for listening, and if you have any questions, please uh, email me.